When I was 13, I wanted to grow my own garden. I loved the idea of being able to grow my own vegetables without the help of others. The only problem was I am an incredibly lazy individual. Give me a task to complete and I'll come up with 10 different ways to avoid doing it. So I wanted to grow my own garden, but I didn't want to have to go to all of the effort required to do so. Things like watering my plants, tending to them, checking for pests, anything like that. So what did I do? Rather than giving up, I used my 13-year-old mind and came up with some solutions. In my first garden, I stacked a hose against two vertical bricks to create a sort of home irrigation system. It meant that when I left the house every day for school, I'd simply turn on the hose when I left and my plants would be watered for the day. In my second garden, I changed things up a bit. I hung plants off of an old table using some yarn and some bricks. This way they were suspended so pests couldn't get to them, which meant I didn't have to check the slugs. And in my third garden, I changed things up again. This time I stacked them vertically using a ladder similar to this image. Um, and this way my garden took up way less space than before, which was great. And in actuality, all of these gardens worked. I managed to keep the gardens alive and grow my vegetables with little work. Now, I should make one thing very clear. The only reason these gardens were self-sustaining for as long as they were was because I made it so that I could put in as little effort as possible to keep them alive. Some may call this laziness, I call it innovation. It wasn't until a few years later I came back to this idea of growing food with low human inputs. Once again, I wanted to grow my own food, but I didn't want to have to go to all of the effort to do it normally. I didn't have the time, the money, or the dedication. But the one thing that I did have was a fish tank, and that in itself presented a solution. It's called aquaponics. Aquaponics is the process of growing plant life symbiotically with aquatic life, and it takes advantage of the natural nitrogen cycle that occurs in everyday life. So as a bit of background, nitrogen exists all around us in varying states in the biosphere, geosphere and atmosphere. 78% of the air is actually nitrogen, which is great because it's needed by all organisms to make proteins and DNA, so basically for life. The only problem is it exists in the atmosphere in a state where organisms can't use it. So instead, it needs to enter the soil through precipitation. After that, it can be converted by bacteria into a more usable nitrate form, and from there, plants can then take up the nitrates. From there, herbivores can then use those nitrates, and then carnivores. When animals die, these nitrates are then entered into the soil as ammonia. This is when bacteria then convert the ammonia back into a usable form that can be excreted into the atmosphere. And what you see is that this cycle starts again, and so it's a self-sustaining cycle. Now, for anyone who's a fish tank at home, you know that you're basically replicating this nitrogen cycle, right, because your fish tank at home is a microcosm of a natural ecosystem. The only problem is, when your fish excrete waste, or worse, die, there's nothing there to remove those excess nitrates, and what ends up happening is those nitrates build up. Since nitrates are toxic to fish, this is normally when you'd have to change the water in your fish tank to restart your cycle. So what we're seeing is that you're really missing that intermediate step, that step when the nitrogen from the waste is removed to restart that cycle. But like I said, nitrogen is needed by all organisms for growth, so it seems like such a waste to be removing that beneficial nitrogen from your fish tank. And this is where aquaponics comes in. Aquaponics adds that all-important intermediate step. When you add plants to the system, the plants can take up that nitrogen waste. This not only removes the waste from the fish tank, but it also promotes plant growth by supplying the necessary nutrients needed to grow. And in my case, this was a perfect solution. With the vegetable roots submerged, I didn't have to water my plants. Since it was a vertical system, it didn't take up, up any more space than a normal fish tank would. And since it was an isolated system, it meant that I didn't have to check for pests. Not only that, with nitrogen being removed from my fish tank, I didn't need to change the water, which was like killing two birds with one stone. <laughs> and the really interesting thing is, 
Not only did my plants survive in the system, they actually thrived. Myself and others have found that plants can grow up to three times faster in an aquaponic system when you compare it to conventional methods. So, in theory, I could produce enough lettuce for my family to keep us self-reliant, rather than buying commercial produce from the supermarket. This is not only easier for my family, it's also more environmentally friendly. To understand this concept, we use the idea of food miles, which basically summarizes the distance food travels to get from where it's grown to your plate. So, in theory, a supermarket tomato would have far more food miles than one grown by a fruit street vendor. The more food miles there are, the greater the distance the food has travelled, the greater the CO2 produced, the more pollution, the greater the environmental impact. So, in theory, aquaponic veggies would have a food miles value of zero, right, because it's not travelling anywhere to get from where it's grown to your plate. Not only that, aquaponic veggies produce no waste, there's no pesticides and no fertilisers are used either. It's what we call a lean green machine. Now, remember, the original reason I started this project in the first place was because I was too lazy to do it by conventional methods. I wanted to grow my own food, but I didn't want to have to go to all of the effort required to do so. And this system allowed me to do that. But I should also make one thing very clear. Literally, the only change I made to my fish tank was adding this lid. That was really all I did, and it was that simple. But this one change meant that I went from harming the environment to actually helping it. So, what does this mean for all of us? We all want to be good people. You'll find that it's actually weird to find someone who doesn't want to help the environment. We all want to feel like we're helping the environment and being worldly conscious. And what we've ended up doing is romanticizing the idea of sustainability. Just ask any vegan on Instagram. <laughs> but the thing that we're also seeing is that in reality, it's becoming harder and harder to, meet the, to be sustainable and at the same time meet the demands of everyday life. What we're seeing is that people are more likely to address the smaller issues, things like how to get to work on time, where to find a cheap and easy meal, over the larger ones like global warming and climate change. Admit it, humans are creatures of comfort. If it requires too much effort, quite often we just don't do it. As The Guardian noted, our reasons are usually contextual. The aircon controls are too complicated. The recycling bin is on the other side of the room. I don't know how to print double-sided. But this is one of the reasons why aquaponics can be so successful. You have to do nothing to keep the system alive. No monitoring is required, and you can eat the product right on site. It's small, which means that anyone can use it, even someone living in an apartment but it's also easy enough to operate, which means that anyone can do it. Imagine if we could all grow our own food within our own households. And it gets even cooler when you start scaling up these systems. At Disneyland's Epcot, we're seeing vegetables on the hundreds being supported by edible fish, like catfish, eels, and shrimp. So sustainable practices are more effective when they're easier for the everyday man to use because what we're seeing is that the less resistance there is to a task, the more likely we are to do it. We need to encourage sustainable behaviour through sustainable changes, enabling behaviour changes through making it easier to do something. This perhaps is an obvious perspective, but it's one that we often overlook when we're trying to find a more complex solution. So, don't think about sustainable innovation as completely changing the way you live your life. Instead, think about it as a way of keeping the way that you're living your life today, while at the same time drastically changing the outcomes and the impacts of the way you live your daily life. Thank you.